Well, hello there to you, and thank you for clicking on this video. Sit down, buckle up. It should be fun. It's Q&A time. Thanks to all of you that went to at OTRS Central on Twitter and participated in this Q&A. Got lots of questions to get through. Going to try and get through them all. he -ya. Make sure you click that subscribe button if you're first time checking this out. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. James Faluka is going to kick us off by asking, what are the first five names that come to your mind that if WWE booked them better would be much bigger stars than what they are? Mine would be Aleister Black, Kevin Owens, Cesaro, Chad Gable, and Braun Strowman. I certainly would agree with Braun Strowman. Like, they screwed the pooch with him, missed an opportunity. Um, Cesaro, I would also agree with. I'm not naming him in any order. I'm just giving you five guys. Um, especially with some of the bums and just lame-ass midgets that they've had as champion. There's just lame-ass big dudes that they've had. Like, Cesaro actually had appeal. So I don't, I don't get why Vince just refuses to go there with him when you've had so many other buster-ass dudes as a world champion in that company. Uh, so those would be two I would totally agree with. Um, honestly, I would also say Bray Wyatt. You could talk about, well, The Fiend, it's a lot better, but then you're saying, hey, you got it right the first time. You wouldn't necessarily have to do that massive change in the character. Uh, so that would be another one. Um, Big E, I'll go with Big E. Because you could think he's getting a push, but he's never been world champion. And while he's a part of the New Day, and that in and of itself makes him, I guess, some level of star, like, he should be a whole different level of star. Uh, and then I maybe go with Sasha Banks. Like, when you hear the story of uh, the Star Wars Mandalorian, people discovered her via the, what was it, the Hot Wings show, and not actual WWE, like, that speaks to just how not mainstream the product is now, but also speaks to the fact that she wasn't being shined and featured enough. Like, she probably could be a much bigger deal if she had been done better. Jeremy Adams, how hypocritical was it for CM Punk to judge and want to fight Chris Brown over his domestic violence claims, but not call out Ray Rice or Stone Cold or the other MMA fighters with the same claims of violence to women? Yeah, it's absolutely hypocritical. Unfortunately, the world is full of hypocrisy, and at different times, we are all certainly guilty of it. And I know I've talked about it before with Austin, like, I, it irritates me that people crap on Hogan to the level of degree that they do, and deservably so. Again, to be clear, the argument for me is never that he doesn't deserve it, because he does. He absolutely does. What I don't get is these same people that when a Hogan appears on TV get pissed off, but when Austin appears, who was a you know convicted woman beater, like, we're okay with this? We're cool with this? I'm just saying, like, let's have some... Uh, equivalency of standards. Uh, but yeah, hypocrisy is rampant. We all do it. Mark Whalen, 67. Who would you root for if Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn were to go one-on-one, -on -one, and why would it be the Tribal Chief? That is an outstanding freaking question, Mark Whalen, 67. And for that, I'm going to follow you on Twitter. You deserve it. And you guys should follow him too. This is how you ask a Q&A question. This is a Q&A question that our tribal chief would be proud of, and frankly, Sami Zayn would understand too. I mean, Sami Zayn is great right now. But Roman Reigns is the tribal chief. Like, we all have to fall in line, and that includes Sami Zayn. That's why Roman would win. MFA2, other than London, which cities that have never hosted a WrestleMania do you think will host one eventually? I could see Tokyo someday. Ooh, that would be like the ultimate conflict internally for Meltzer, wouldn't it? Ooh, they did it to Tokyo, though? Oh, ooh. Um, Does Mexico City really have an arena that can support it? Uh, would people actually want to go to Mexico City for a WrestleMania week? I wouldn't be surprised someday if it's somewhere in, like, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You know, somewhere in Saudi Arabia. Would not surprise me at all. Um... There are certainly other cities. Those are a few that I could potentially think of. Uh, Georgian Fulia. If a company would get Russo and Cornette to have a wrestling feud like Trump and Vince with a wrestler of the own, who should be uh, the Lashley and Umaga for Cornette and Russo? Why would anybody want to do that? Those are two guys that haven't created a star in the business for a decade and a half. Like, who cares about that old garbage anymore? Seriously. <laughs> Mojo Jojo, 1104. 
Have you ever seen the Omega Play Wrestle Rock Rumble video? Oh my god. <laughs> We're out here to do the Wrestle Rock Rumble. Oh god. That was peak 80s white people trying to be hip and cool and appropriate black culture having absolutely no idea how it works. Like you could just see it being Vern and Greg Ganya. <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out how to be cool and hip and with it. Oh, God. It's classic. Uh, and did you like the pairing of Eddie Guerrero in China? Absolutely. It's one of those great pairings that I think both of them came out the better for. Like, it came at a critical time in, in Juncture in Eddie's early WWF run, and it was critical for him. And China, it just helped her maintain relevancy. Um, I thought it was great. I loved it. I absolutely did. Nick Willis, PNW, do you feel that with The Undertaker's retirement that it symbolizes the final nail in the coffin for kayfabe in wrestling? Um, I don't even know if Taker was like the final bastion, but you could certainly make an argument that some elements of protecting the character left with him. You could say that. And while, yes, I certainly understand, like, times change, and I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. You know, I've even talked about before, like, Sometimes you can maybe make an argument that these guys in their, and gals in their real life should go by their real names on Twitter and completely dissociate themselves. Like, you know, actors do it. Actresses do it. So why, why wouldn't wrestlers? Like, you can have an argument about that either way for sure. But um, I also do miss the days where the guys and gals actually pretended like it was real. Like they lived the gimmick. Like there was something appealing about that that we just do not get anymore. Uh, Volfan0531, who should win the Royal Rumble and who should they go after? When I do a video about that sometime, either maybe in December or maybe early January, you will find out my thoughts then. I'm not telling you right now, though. Byron Andreas, uh, can we get a King of the Ring 1998 review? Yes, in 2021, I can tell you I am at the moment intending on doing a King of the Ring review series. It's time. It's long since been time. And I think 2021 is a great time to do so. So, yes, you could certainly expect to get that in 2021. But it's not happening now. Joseph Moran, can you do another Q&A video series on the book of The Hunter, The Hearst, and The Helmsley? Uh, <laughs> if God is going to be featured in a somewhat prominent role for WrestleMania, I can trust you. There will be at least one specifically, solely, entirely dedicated video to God on this channel. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. And by God, if we could get Cena versus Orton at WrestleMania, this time it counts, you're going you're gonna to get a lot of readings from the books of the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. Oh. Hashira95 asks, Will you do a WrestleMania series similar to the 30 Days of Undertake with Q&As, discussions, and... <laughs> you jackass. With a WrestleMania 35 review and a WrestleMania 36 Day 2 review. <laughs> I love how I slid that in. You guys are never going to let that go, huh? <laughs> like I'm continuing to kayfabe on it. I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> um... Mm. Maybe a Road to WrestleMania series? Could be. I, I don't know. Thinking about a lot of things for 2021. Um, so I have honestly thought about it, but I've specifically thought of not reviewing Day 2 of WrestleMania 36 and not reviewing WrestleMania 35 just to F with each and every single one of you that want me to do so. <laughs> MJ, make a podcast. How long do you think our tribal chief can withstand the failures of Jey Uso before he must dismiss him from the family? He cannot be surrounded by losers. Um, and don't underestimate the internal fortitude, the testicular fortitude, the um, strength and compassion of our tribal chief. That's why he's the tribal chief and we are not. Uh, but nothing can, can be allowed to go forever. Um, but he's not ready to give up on his family just yet because he's a good, loving, caring family man who understands the responsibilities that come along with being at the head of the table. MC17 Clark asks, one of the most underrated wrestlers, in my opinion, is Chris Canyon. What was your opinion of him? Who better? Everybody. Canyon was cool, man. He was just cool shit. Sucks that he's gone. You know, he was just, like, 
he was funny. Like, we could use more guys like him, frankly, in wrestling. I, I miss Canyon. If you guys want to chime in in the comments about your favorite Chris Canyon memories, please, please feel free to do so. Um, EJ Dennis. Instead of Cena versus Triple H at WrestleMania 22, should the main event have been Edge versus Cena? That feels like that certainly would have been the more, much more natural way to go. Um, probably would have made for a better match, too. But I get the logic at the time. It's Cena. You're trying to establish him as a top guy. So it makes sense to have him work against previously established true top guys like Triple H and then the next year, Sean. So it's hard to knock the philosophy or the, pro the approach. It was, in theory, the right thing to do. Uh, George, 68, 16, 43, 64. Why the hell do you guys have Twitter handles like this? Jesus. Unbelievable. Should the WWE bring back the World Heavyweight Championship? It looks like a real belt and has way more history than the Universal title. Uh, no, I don't have any real passion for that right now. I'd rather you make the belts mean as much as they possibly can. Look and design does not matter as much. Um, you can always bring back the World Heavyweight Championship, though, since they own the rights to it. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if someday they do. Little DJ Boy, has wrestling ever been mainstream? If so, when was the last time? Well, during the Hogan era, wrestling was absolutely positively mainstream. And you would certainly say that Hogan, Andre, Savage, Warrior, you know, even the other, some of the other guys that were in the old WWF cartoon like Iron Sheik and Volkoff and Piper, you know, those guys, Jake the Snake, you know, JYD, those were mainstream guys. Those were household names, period. And in the Attitude Era, if you don't think people like Austin and Rock and Taker and freaking China... Were, and I'm saying those names in the right order, Sable too, like those were mainstream, well-known, big-time stars, period. No matter how many, how much, like, if people want to crap on, like, the Sable or China thing, like, they are intentionally misleading you and trying to forget just how massively over those individuals were. Not necessarily even just from, like, regular wrestling fans, but in terms of the mainstream, in terms of pop culture, like, um, when you look at the Monday Night Wars... Like, during the Monday Night Wars time frame, Monday Night was struggling really bad because wrestling was kicking its ass on Monday night. Wrestling was more mainstream than Monday Night Football in the late 90s, period. So, yes, there have absolutely been mainstream periods of professional wrestling. Hogan and Andre in February of 88 in that main event rematch from WrestleMania 3 drew 33 million viewers. 33 million. That's pretty damn mainstream, if you ask me. History Guy 007, which dream match would you have rather have seen? Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair at WrestleMania 8 or Hogan versus Austin at, let's say, WrestleMania 18? Hogan versus Austin would have had, had to have some type of uh, invasion angle to it. Like, it certainly was a matchup you should have seen when you have both guys in the company at the same time. Um, but you would have had to have some other type of hook. Hogan and Flair, you have both guys in the company in 91, 92, at the peak of their careers. That match had to happen. It was just, I don't care what defense is given. I don't care what excuse, reason, justification is given. It will always be one of those really dumb decisions to not go there for Vince. Because you just basically, a couple of years later, handed it over to Ted Turner and let him be the one to do it. Like, that was dumb. Conform 1984, will Vince allow a small number of fans into the arenas in the future, or will he wait until he can have uh, no restrictions at all? Yeah, I wonder with Vince, you know, like, you know, he really doesn't care about people that much, let's be clear. So if he could have arenas halfway filled right now, he would do it, even if all guidelines told me he couldn't. Um, the Thunderdome thing, I think, though, right now, until you can have arenas you know, filled at least a 70, 75% capacity, or at least enough to where you could you could hide the fact that it looks halfway empty. Uh, I think Vince is going to want to do the Thunderdome because it's easier for him to control the production of it. It's easier for him to control the kind of feel of it. Um, he's probably fully bought into the look and feel of it. So, yeah, I don't think they're going to have live fans anywhere in the next couple of months. Uh, Jack, how come when you bring up Dolph Ziggler, you use your middles and fingers instead of the F word? Fine. Just for you, Jack. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler. Does that make you happy? 
You really seriously burned a Q&A question to ask me about that squiggle, ziggle piece of fucking garbage. Who's wrong with you? Ugh. Alwyn to the... Uh, what would be some fun feuds for the tribal chief? Uh, what would be some fun feuds for the tribal chief? Um, the Rock, obviously. I think Samoa Joe absolutely would work. Uh, you could still go with Jimmy Uso. You done one Uso, why not the other? And if you're saying, well, you're kind of doing some clicky or breakfast club stuff. Well, when you're the tribal chief, you got to take care of your family. And when it's working, why rock the boat? Okay, baby? Those are just some of the ones that you can think of that would really work. I also would like to see him in this form. Like the interesting thing now that Roman has changed his character so much and he's turned babyface here. Babyface. Babyface. Is that you could throw so many different people. Like him and Brock would have an entirely different feel to it. Him and Cena would have an entirely different feel to it. Like everything would be different. So you can do so many different things with Roman, which is why absolutely, totally why I am in no hurry to take that belt off of him. It should be a minimum 12-month run. It maybe should approach 18 or even 24 months. Like, that's how great this has been and can continue to be. Rick Styles, 1985. When WWE keeps putting part-time superstars in the big spots at WrestleMania or other major shows, doesn't it make it look like the things like the Performance Center or NXT seem like a waste of time? Well, they kind of are already. Uh, but you know, there's a twofold approach. One, the company intentionally chose not to want to make big, big, massive stars over the past decade. So they kind of reap what they sow and they have to continue to go back into the Wayback Machine to find them. Because, you know, the, that star power does matter. The brand, the shield of WWE it does not do it all, all the time. Uh, people want to pay to see stars, not just a show. That only carries you but for so long. Uh, but then there's also a piece, too, like, in spite of bad booking and everything else, uh, for some of these talents, like, if you want a spot, then be better. Sometimes people can find a way to truly be great in really bad circumstances. You can only make but so many excuses for them. They should find a way to adapt and adjust and make the best out of their situation. So if they can't do that, then I feel no sympathy for them. No, they shouldn't be on the bigger shows. It's that simple. Chrysler San Martin. I'm sure this will be a good question you freaking heretic do you celebrate the real christmas or 727 for your false god ug what are the traditions on that fake christmas ug well to your second question first the traditions on that fake christmas of december 25th includes people gathering with friends and family that they really don't like especially family but they connected by blood so they feel some type of morbid obligation to connect with them when you absolutely did not choose them. You absolutely should not have to. Um, therefore, making prayers to a God that they believe is real, that, you know, exactly. He doesn't make main events at WrestleMania happen. Our God does on the Hunter, the Hearst, and the Helmsley. That other God sits there and watches hundreds of thousands of people die from COVID and allows it to happen and allows millions of people to be unemployed and allows kids to die and of disease and be homeless and starve and you know then people sit there and pray and say all glory goes to that god like do you willfully intend on being in an abusive relationship like do you really like that or do you like the type of relationship with a deity that you can actually see, you can feel, you can believe in, and you can see the miracles that he works on a year in and year out basis. And as far as to your first question, Chrysler San Martin, you heretical heretic, do you celebrate the real Christmas or the false one? Um, let's be clear here. Triple H is God. He's not Jesus. Okay? There's a difference. There is a difference. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? God has daughters. Daughters. So maybe it's like Jesus Sweena. I don't know what the hell. You know, but now. And plus, 
His day is every day, so why would we have to pick one day? We don't have to latch on to pagan holidays and try to call them Christian. Nomadic flip! Yeah, see how that worked out for you! See how that worked out for you! A hundred hail hunters for you! Hunter Hurston Helmsley. You should be ashamed of yourself. Nomadic flip! How close is Cody to becoming the Jeff Jarrett of AEW if he's not there already? In no way, shape, or form is he there. Look, I don't like Cody Rhodes. I think we have perfectly established that over the past couple of years. He's a lying piece of crap. He is garbage. And eventually more people will come to realize that. That said, does he bring in people just to feud with them so he can go over on them? No, the Memphis Big Car piece of crap did. I'm sorry, how many times has Cody Rhodes won AEW's World Championship? Oh, that's right, zero. Look at Slap Nuts' record with TNA. I get where people want to go with this, and they're trying to. And believe me, in an ideal world, I would love nothing more for than it to actually happen. Because it would allow me to truly demonstrate um, an appropriate level of hatred for Cody Rhodes that he totally uh, has justifiably deserved. It would certainly add more intrigue and interest to me and for others when it comes to the Dynamite Reviews Weekly. Uh, but I'm not going to sit there and just throw it out there when it is not applicable. It's not even close, dude. It's not even close. So I wish people would stop saying it because it's crap. Apoorv, uh, Apoorv Shankar. Hey, Jeff, you've always said how much Hogan really meant to your childhood. So how did you actually feel seeing him come back to win, come back to the WWE after nine years away and win back the title from God Ugg, of all people? And on that note, can we ever expect a review of Backlash 2002? Uh, yes, you can. Um, as far as that, it was a huge deal to me at the time back in 2002. Again, it was a long time ago. You know, I remember, I remember telling people before WrestleMania 18, like, Hogan Rock has to main event, right? They can't be this stupid to do Jericho and Triple H in the main event, can they? I said they have to be able to see that Hogan and Rock is going to be iconic, that Hogan and Rock is going to absolutely tear down the place and nothing can follow it. I was right. It's like it was a few years later with uh, um, Sean and Taker at 25. Um, but... Then seeing him come back and win the title, like I remember telling the guys I would watch wrestling with back then that, you know, Hogan's going to win this title, and none of them wanted to believe it. Like, they thought he, they thought Hogan was going to put over Rock at Mania, and then he was going to put over Hunter. I said, oh, no, 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 no. It's one thing to lose to the Rock, brother, but he ain't losing to Triple H, dude. <laughs> you could forget all that. So when Hogan actually did beat him at Backlash, I did the... Ripping of the shirt and running out of the apartment where you're watching it at and yelling like a banshee down the street. Hell yeah, it was a big deal to me at the time. It was exciting stuff. You got to forgive 21-year-old me, okay? Wrestling was still kind of fun back then. Seg East Mike 87. Do you think it's still possible for WrestleMania 37 to have Roman Reigns versus The Rock? I do. I, I wish we could have some fans at Mania so that way it makes a lot more sense to do it. Uh, but I certainly think it could be a possibility. Uh, Dalek of Chaos. Uh, had the Owen botch never happened, how long do you think Austin could have gone as the top guy, and how long do you see his career having gone? Um, it's hard to say because, you know, he could have lasted just as long. You could also say that in the long term, while the neck injury hurt him, you could say at that period of time it helped him because you were able to sit there and talk about this guy being the toughest son of a bitch on the planet. And the fact that he was still able to get up with a broken neck and then come back just a little bit later. And then a couple of months later, he's squaring off face-to-face -face with Mike Tyson on the mic in a WWF ring. Like, it all kind of fit and worked. You don't ever want that to happen, sure. Um, but, you know, I don't know if it would have meant that he'd have been around any longer. I don't know. Wrestling Rants. If he does return soon... Uh, who else is left for Brock Lesnar to feud with that'll make it for an interesting opponent besides Roman Reigns? Certainly would make sense for me, him to maybe come back and try to get another uh, go around with Drew, but obviously Roman's going to be one. So there's two opponents right there. Um, you got two more matches out of him. I don't think that's bad. You should be jobbing out in both of them. Uh, Digital Dread, when he steps down and retires, what do you think will be Vincent McMahon's biggest regret about running WWE? Uh, that WWE Studios is not perceived as a major movie studio. 
I have no doubt in my mind that if Vince had his druthers, he would rather be the chief executive of a major movie studio and doing that. That's what he would want to do more than sports entertainment. So I think WWE Studios not being a bigger deal, being a bigger money maker, not being a bigger force in the world of movies, I think that beyond question to me is the single biggest regret that he has. Even more so than the two failures of the XFL under him. Splashboat Kieran, despite the stupid and over-the-top gimmicks throughout wrestling history, especially in the mid-90s, why do you think people like Cornette and his followers say gimmicks like Orange Cassidy and Jericho and MJF singing uh, are killing the wrestling business? Uh, because they're out of touch. Like, if you did nothing but that stuff, yeah, it would kill wrestling. If you do nothing like but the, the move match mark nerd battles that we see so often in wrestling, then you also kill wrestling. You need some variety, you need some spice, and there certainly is a place for different characters and some comedy in there. So... I don't know why they say it, because they're morons. That's why. How about that? And they're really out of touch. Liam Patrick, 1993. Should Roman have a custom belt? Um, You know what I would advocate for maybe a custom belt? Is if he beat The Rock at WrestleMania 37. Well, if, of course, when he would beat The Rock at WrestleMania 37, it's more about the if of whether or not that match actually happens. Uh, then you come out with some Samoan-inspired type of design for our tribal chief as champion. That's when you do it. Um, otherwise, no need to do it right now. C. Trotter, 1197. Do you think Booker T is better as a babyface or a heel? No matter what to me, Booker T's always been babyface. Just always was really hard for me to boo Booker T. So it doesn't really make a difference. But to me, I always thought better as a babyface. Joseph, 70, 78, 43, 60. Again, Jesus Christ. And then guys with your Twitter handles. What would have drawn more, Cena versus Hogan or Punk versus Austin? Um, probably Punk versus Austin because Austin wrestling at that time would have been a much, much bigger surprise and a much, much bigger deal than, let's say, Hogan wrestling, let's say, Cena instead of Orton at SummerSlam 2006. You get know what I mean? So Cena and Hogan absolutely would have been a draw, but I think Punk versus Austin actually would have had more appeal and been a bigger draw for that reason. And Trent Graspart is going to close us out with the second best question of today's Q&A. Is Dino Bravo dead? <laughs> bang, 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 you're dead. 18 bullets in your head. He's dead. He's dead. Cigarettes, he's dead. <laughs> yes, Dino Bravo's dead. We checked and... Uh, still dead. <laughs> so anyways, thanks to all of you that stuck around for this long q and I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, make sure you keep coming back all month long. Lots of great content coming up on this channel, so stay tuned.